All right, because logarithms are one to one, so a logarithm function is a one to one function. In other words, the picture, if you graph it, passes the horizontal line test. We actually have the following new technique. It looks very much like, and the technique is very similar to one we saw for equations with exponents, but now if you have an equation with logs, same idea. So log base A of C equals log base A of D. If you have that, then you can just say that C is equal to D. So just in words, if you have an equation with one logarithm on each side, there's a log on the left side, there's a log on the right side, and the logarithms are of the same base, you notice here it's a log base A, and again it's a log base A, so same base, then you can set the inputs to the logarithms equal. So the C and the D are the inputs to these logarithms, that's why the language here again is log base A of C, with that word of. There's one additional thing we need to watch out for, though, we have to check for false solutions. So remember that the input to every logarithm must be bigger than zero. And we'd seen that in domain issues, but it's going to come up again in these equations. We'll see. Um, starting with a nice example and building up there. So this issue of checking for false solutions, it won't kind of, it won't come up right away, but let's just, I just wanted to mention it up front. So let's solve log base 5 of x plus 2 equals log base 5 of 6 minus x. So we've got a single logarithm on each side, a log base 5 and a log base 5. They are of the same base, base 5, base 5. So we get to set the inputs equal. So we'll set x plus 2 equal to 6 minus x. Now just like with the exponential equations from uh, last last time, don't draw slashes through the logs. It's so tempting to want to put a diagonal slash through the log base 5 and through the log base 5. It creates problems later though. It, it People end up thinking that this means log base 5 times 6 minus x, but it's not because there's no multiplication. So don't draw the slashes through, just use the technique. The technique just says we get to set the inputs equal. So x plus 2 is equal to 6 minus x. That's a nice equation. Yeah, we'll have 2x equals 4, divide both sides by 2, and you'll have x is equal to 2. We're not actually quite done yet because we have to check for false solutions. That is, we need to check if x equals 2 works in the sense that the inputs to the log, so there's here uh, input to the log is x plus 2, here input to the log is 6 minus x, we have to check that those are greater than 0. So is x equal to 2 a solution? Well, again, an input to this log, there's a log on the left side, there's a log on the right side. The input to, to this log here was x plus 2. So x plus 2, we'll plug in 2 for x, so 2 plus 2, which is 4, that is bigger than 0. Okay, that's good. The other logarithm has input 6 minus x. So 6 minus <coughs> x, which is now 6 minus 2, simplifies to 4, which is also bigger than 0. That's good. So x equals 2 is a solution. We had the input to the log in both cases was bigger than 0. So, so x equals 2 is, in fact, a solution. Now, this seems like paranoid to check right now, but we'll see in a future example about this. Input to the logarithm must be bigger than 0. So let's try another one real quick first. So log base 8 of 4x minus 5 equals log base 8 of 2x minus 1. We have a single log on each side. They're of the same base. So we'll set the inputs equal. <coughs> Without drawing any slashes through the log base 8 on each side, we'll just set the inputs equal. And if 4x minus, ooh, that should, uh, sorry about that. That should be a 5 there. Okay, we'll type out. Let's just correct this on the spot. Okay, so 4x minus 5 equals 2x minus 1. Um, <clears throat> add uh, 5 to both sides. Okay, at least it's corrected here. So 2x equals 4, divide both sides by 2, and you have x is equal to 2. Now we just need to check, is x equal to 2 a solution? Again, sorry about the typo here. This, where, where, the, where the mouse is, that should be a 5. So is x equal to 2 a solution? Well, plug in 2 for x into 4x minus 5 and you end up with 8 minus 5, which is bigger than 0. Plug in 2 in for x into 2x minus 1, and you end up with 4 minus 1, which is 3, which is positive again. So in the input to the first log is bigger than 0. The input to the second log is also bigger than 0. So x equals 2 is a solution. <coughs> we needed to check that the x value 2 caused each logarithm's input to be bigger than 0. I know this distinction sounds funny, but we're going to see this in the next problem. So log base 3 of 4 minus x squared equals log base 3 of negative 2x squared plus 3x plus 8. So again, no slashes through the logs, just set the inputs equal. So we'll have 4 minus x squared equals negative 2x squared plus 3x plus 8. 
This is a quadratic equation. Yeah, we, we can uh, just reorganize some things, add and subtract on both sides, and you end up with x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0. The left side factors, apply the zero product property, and you'll have x equals 4 or x equals negative 1. Now, is 4 a solution? Is negative 1 a solution? Let's check. So is 4 a solution? We need to plug in 4 for x into the inputs to the logarithm. So one of the inputs, you have 4 minus x squared, is that's the input to the logarithm. If you plug in x as 4, you have 4 minus 4 squared. That's not bigger than 0. We don't even have to check the other input. So x equals 4 is actually not a solution. And we don't even have to check the other uh, log's input. So this plugging in x equals 4, we have 4. The input is, is what's in parentheses here. Right? Again, the language of log base 3 of 4 minus x squared. So that text that we say after the of, that's the input. So 4 minus x squared is the input. Or in other words, here, trying to plug in 4 for x, 4 minus 4 squared. Well, that's 4 minus 16. That's not bigger than 0. So 4 is not a solution. What about x equals negative 1? That was the other x value we got. x equals negative 1. Is that a solution? Well, let's look at the input of the log. 1 log's input was 4 minus x squared, while 4 minus x squared is now 4 minus negative 1 squared. Uh, negative 1 squared is positive 1, so 4 minus 1, which is 3. That's bigger than 0. So good. So, so far, so good. We need to look at the other log's input. And if you plug in a negative 1 for each x into uh, negative 2x squared plus 3x plus 8, then you have negative 2 times quantity negative 1 squared plus 3 times negative 1 plus 8, which is going to simplify to 3, which is bigger than 0. So that's good. The input to this log is also bigger than 0. So x equals negative 1 is a solution. Now check out what happened in this problem. This, this problem is carefully curated. I get that 4 is positive. I get that negative 1 is negative. Neither of those things matter here. right? The fact that 4 is positive and the fact that negative 1 is not positive, that didn't matter. What matters is, did that x value cause each log's input to be bigger than 0? And in the case of the number of positive 4, it caused the input 4 minus x squared to not be bigger than 0. So 4 was not a solution, even though 4 was positive. And then negative 1, yeah, that number is negative. Negative 1 is negative, but that's not the point. When you plug in negative 1 for x, 4 minus x squared is positive. And when you plug in negative 1 for x, negative 2x squared plus 3x plus 8, that's also positive. So negative 1 is a solution. You should try this on your own. Um, this is just a summary. It's not all the steps, but I want you to go through. Yeah, it's, it's good to try on your own. Please try on your own. Solve uh, ln of 2x cubed minus 9x minus 1 equals ln of x cubed minus x squared plus 8. Now, ln, I know it seems like funny and new and different, but ln, just remember, it's log base e. So there's a log of the same base on each side, you get to set the inputs equal. Eventually you have to factor. When you have four terms, think about factoring by grouping and so on. So in the end, you should end up with three solutions at first, x equals three, x equals negative one, x equals negative three. But you'll have to check which of these inputs causes the logs to be bigger, the inputs to the logs, excuse me, to be bigger than zero. And just as a summary of what you should discover is that x equals three is a solution. And x equals negative one is also a solution, even though negative one is a negative number. Yeah, even though negative one is negative, the thing is using negative one as x causes the inputs to the logs. That's what's in parentheses up at the top there and there. So those will be positive. Now x equals negative three is not a solution. You can check because uh, it does not cause the inputs to the logs to be bigger than zero.